And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I have commanded thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee uh, for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment which I have commanded thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far from uh, far, neither is it far off. Uh, it is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over to uh, over Jordan to to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that. Uh, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, for this great reading today. Lord, we come to you today, dear God, in your sight. And so, Lord, as we begin to focus, to uh, narrow in what you have for us today, I pray, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, you would help this preacher to, be, uh, to, be, uh, uh, to set myself aside as I've already committed myself unto you. I pray, dear God, that as I uh, stand here and deliver the message, I pray, dear God, that you would speak to our hearts and help us, dear God, to know what you want us to know today, for it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Be seated if you would. As we see this morning that there are many times in the scripture, uh, in, in, in the scripture that when we can hear the voice of judgment in God, uh, and, and yet we can see that. We can see God voicing his judgment upon the land, the land of Israel, and God has given them a, uh, a choice to make in life. And yet, we find that many of the choices that God makes, uh, makes in our life, uh, those choices come with his, uh, the voice of hope. And uh, God doesn't just give us choices and leave us uh, out there walking the plank of life, but God gives us choices. And, and in those choices, we can find his love and we can find uh, the hope uh, 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 of our lives. And yet we think about how God often dealt with the land of Israel. Uh, Israel, uh, we know, uh, many of us learn from the Bible, learn from uh, uh, preaching and learn being in the Sunday school and, and being in church. We know that uh, there are many times that the Lord uh, 
dealt with the children of Israel uh, because there were uh, great times, uh, many times in their life where they forsook God. And yet we find that uh, they forsook God because they went after idols. They went after uh, other gods. And, and, uh, and so it's interesting enough to know that there's no nation that has ever been so blessed uh, than the nation of Israel, and yet uh, they seem to have a lot of trouble in their lives. When they were near God and they were walking according to his commandments and when they were following him, I mean, it was the b most blessed nation uh, that any nation has ever been. But when they went through those times and they forsook God and, and, they, and they set God aside and they chased after uh, those idols and allowed the uh, other nations to be an influence in their life, we find that they were the greatest nation that suffered uh, more than any other nation. And so I want to uh, come to you today, and I want you to consider how Moses is in this chapter, and he has given them uh, a, a, uh, a he given them an extent uh, that that for them to not decline in their lives. I mean, they they were to make a commitment to God. And that commitment was to be in, uh, it was to be a daily decision in our life. Uh, we think about how uh, oftentimes scriptures support the belief that God is a choice. Amen. And uh, many people uh, uh, believe today that, well, God's a uh, one-time decision. Uh, you say, preacher, what does that mean? Well, it was kind of like when I was young and... Uh, uh, 18 years old, I finally got my license, amen, and, uh, amen, and, uh, boy, ain't nothing like having your own license where you can get in your car, drive off, and go somewhere, amen, uh, but I got my license at 18 years old, and, uh, I was instructed that, uh, you had to go and pay, uh, you had to go and get insurance, so I got my license, and I got my insurance, and, man, I thought that I was something, amen, I'm my own person, amen? And, uh, but, uh, but I didn't know that when you got the insurance, uh, it was a monthly decision, amen? And uh, so I paid for the insurance uh, for that one-time thing. I think it was maybe $300 or something. I don't remember. And, uh, but I put that money down. I thought, man, well, that's a lot of money for insurance. Well, I didn't know that you had to pay uh, on a monthly basis. And so, uh, so as it is, uh, the reports were coming in, but I was a teenager. I didn't have enough common sense to open up the, uh, the envelope, look inside, and read what they were suggesting to me. And what they were suggesting to me, well, I didn't know nothing about it because I had not a clue because I didn't open up the envelope. I just look at the envelope. I said, man, they got all kinds of advertisement. I took it, threw it in a trash can, and I went on by my life. Amen? Well, you say, what has all that got to say to you? Well, I was my own person. Amen? I had the right to do that. But I didn't know that eight months later, uh, and I, 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 I kind of couldn't understand, Miss Linda, why the officer gave me five tickets my very first time ever getting pulled over. And I wasn't doing anything wrong, but uh, the guy rolled up behind me. He uh, ran my license plate and discovered that I didn't have no, uh, I didn't have no insurance. And he gave me five different tickets, amen. And buddy, it costed me. You say, what, what do you mean it cost you? I mean, it cost me a lot of money. I'm a teenager. Can you imagine coming up with $600 in a couple weeks? I mean, that's a lot of money, amen. But what I'm saying to you, uh, I didn't know uh, that having a license was something that I had to uh, uh, maintain. And, uh, you know, that's kind of like it is with God. When you make a commitment to God, it's something that we must learn how to maintain. And so, uh, so we can make a conscious decision to sin and or we can make a conscious decision to seek God's forgiveness. But may I say to you, it will be a continual thing. See, uh, uh, I think, I, I believe this. Uh, yesterday's faith is not enough for today. Each day we need to go to God and we need to get uh, that faith from him to get through that day. 
But a lot of times we find that in the lives of Christians, they want to believe God one time, saying, well, I went to God for salvation, therefore it's all written as going on. And it is when it comes to salvation, but it isn't for daily life. It isn't for that continual need of God's grace in our life. If we're going to have God's grace for today, we must go to him and we must begin to seek him uh, as for who he is. And so the nation of Israel lived a, a lifestyle such as this. They, uh, they thought, that well, God's our God and uh, we can do whatever we want and we can live here how we want and God's always going to be there. Well, that is true uh, if you're God's child, amen? But you remember, God dealt harshly with the children of Israel because he wanted them, even though that they were his people, he, he didn't let them escape from living in sin either, right? And so what does all that mean? Well, I, I just want to say that uh, as we make all uh, as we all make daily decisions every day, rather out of impulse or rather by habit or even by processes of discernment, we need to know that these choices that we make must be made every day. Amen? And uh, every day we make choices. We choose to get up. We choose to uh, go to church. We choose what we're going to wear. We choose even how we're going to comb our hair. Amen? Uh, I, I like it. Uh, uh, I, I decided the way I'm going to comb my hair at eight years old. Amen. Thank you, buddy. And uh, eight years old, I used to comb my hair like my two boys do. They, uh, they try to part it on the side. But I remember at eight years old, uh, I, I made that decision that I'm going to comb my hair and uh, the way I comb it today, and I'm going to do it to the rest of my life. And I've done that, amen? And uh, you say, well, what does all, all that mean for me? I'm saying to you, we make choices for ourselves, and sometimes uh, we, we take them throughout our life. And uh, I think that uh, when I was, a, uh, when I was uh, young, right? Uh, man, boy, man, I'll tell you right now, I don't think there's anybody, uh, Miss Kathy, that's been as, ever as stubborn as I have. Amen. And I mean, I was, I was downright stubborn, you know. Uh, but you know what? I got out in life. And uh, I realized that, you know what? Some things you need to change. Amen. Because when you begin to go up against the walls of life, I mean, when you begin to go up against the hardship, you're going to realize that there are things that you must change. Amen. And uh, my life is easier. Uh, my life has become more easier the more I get the rebellious out of my own heart. Amen? Now, you say, what does all that mean? Well, I'm saying to you this morning that choosing can be quite simple uh, if you simply just put your life into God's hands. Amen? Now, I want to break some of this down. Let me, let me describe it to you this way. Uh, if you were asked to choose between a million dollars and a bar uh, and a candy bar, what would be your choice? You wouldn't have to think about it, would you? I mean, you would know, hey, we're going to choose a candy bar, amen? Nah, you would choose a million dollars, wouldn't you? Amen? And uh, uh, it would be no brainer, amen? But what, if you, uh, but what if you had to choose between two million dollars, amen? Uh, between a, a million dollars? Well, again, it's no brainer. We know that you would choose two million dollars. But what if somebody came to you and asked you, what are your two favorite candy bars? And you told them, and they pulled out of their pocket your two favorite candy bars, and they say, okay, you can, have, you can have either one of them. You just need to choose which one you want. Well, it become a little hard, amen? Because now you're choosing something that you like, and you like both of them. They're both your favorite. And so you, would, you say, well, how would you choose? Well, that, that's a... That's a, 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 a uh, a process of elimination, a, a, a process determining how you feel at that moment, amen? And, uh, you know, we go through life like that. We make choices, and uh, we process those choices, what I want, amen? Tell me you don't never make a decision like that, amen? You go and buy a car. You buy the car you want, 
and uh, you buy the car that you like and you buy the color and all of that. Uh, my father-in-law just broke down and, uh, uh, a couple months ago and bought him a car. Amen. Now he thinks this thing is like the uh, like a, a brand new rocket getting ready to go out of orbit. Amen. And uh, it's a, he thinks it's a wonderful thing. And uh, and uh, and I think it's good for him. Amen. Praise God that uh, you know he could uh, make those uh, those decisions and determination. That he's going to pay the bill because that's something. It's not a one-time thing. Amen. You got to continually pay for it until you pay it off. But uh, I, I, but we were. Um, I went up there um, a couple weeks ago to to go get my wife. They went on up there a little bit earlier, and I hitched a ride and went up there. And I uh, got a ride up there and, and uh, spent a day with him. And uh, he picked me up after work. And we got riding down the road. And uh, I think it was a good car, eh, man? He was telling me all the radio, what the radio does, and, and uh, uh, just telling me how it's got four, it's, it's uh, one of those uh, Jeeps. And it's a four by four Jeeps and all, you know, nice little, I mean, it looked like a little, to me, it looked like a little matchbox car, eh, man? And I got all these accessories and all that. And so we riding down the road, and I, I, I told him, I said, man, I said, man, praise God. I said, but Dad, I said, uh, you got some issues with this car. What are you talking about, Robert? I said, you hear that, Roy? I said, that's one of those CV joints going out. What? He said, man. Uh, and sure enough, I mean, it's a CV joint going out. But, uh, but I want to say to you, we make decisions according to how we feel uh, what we want or, or even our likes. And, and yet, uh, if, if somebody came to us with the things that we want, we would have a hard time deciding, trying to calculate what is the greatest value in what we want. And so I, I think that uh, that could still be, as, there, uh, as that is a principle, I still believe that that could be applied to the things of God. And, uh, and I believe that uh, God wants us to, uh, he wants to know that we can go to him. And when we make decisions in our life, they should be decisions, making decisions for God. They should be decisions that are not causing us to stumble, but are decisions that will help us to walk with God. All right. And uh, I think about today uh, in these processes of elimination, learning to make decisions for God. We need to know what God says in his word. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Amen? And uh, I think that as Christians, we don't need to worry about where we're going to go uh, uh, through an eternity because we would know that God has already secured that. Amen. He did that when we went to the Lord Jesus Christ. That cross for Calvary. And uh, we don't have to know that. But I believe that God wants us to know uh, some things in our life. And uh, I just want to say to you today that this was offered to Israel. And it is offered to you and I today as well. God wants to give us an end of an expectancy. Amen. And, uh, and that end of expectancy becomes between the decisions of life and death, decisions between blessings and cursings, uh, decisions be between uh, prosperity and destruction. And, uh, and so there should be, uh, in our lives as God's people, it should be a no-brainer. Amen? But what the question comes, why would anyone be willing to choose death over life uh, why, uh, why would they want to choose that? Well, it's beyond me, and it's about beyond you. And uh, we can't answer that for them. We, have to, we can only answer it for our own selves. And, um, and why would somebody choose uh, cursing or destruction in their life more than the goodness of God? I don't know. But people do it every day. And, uh, and, uh, and they do it every day. Rather they understand his judgment or rather they understand his mercy, people choose according to what they believe has the greatest value. You see? And, uh, and we do that as people. And so today, I want to give you three points. I'm not going to keep it long. Amen? It's not a long message. Amen? 
the, uh, the message is, is straight to the point and, uh, and it's just like, like that, amen? Uh, just like candy, amen? Uh, it's either sweet or better, right? Like when uh, mama cooks dinner, she either tastes good or it doesn't, amen? One or the other. And, uh, but uh, this morning, look at me uh, just in uh, three things this morning. And first of all, look at me in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. The Bible says here in verse 11, For this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Now I want to give to you this morning that uh, making decisions for God, according to the Bible, uh, when we make choices, these choices or these decisions, ever how you want to look at it, they are not disguised with God. Amen? God doesn't disguise the choices. All right? If you choose to be if you choose to do right, he doesn't give you hidden things behind that and he and he rewards you with evil. Amen? If you are making right choices, it's out in the open and God is going to reward you to according to how you make your choices. And so this morning, I want you to see that these uh, these choices that we make in life, uh, these choices that we make in life, they're not disguised, amen? And, uh, and, and so uh, they're not disguised from God. And uh, so look at me in, uh, as we bring out this morning how choices are not disguised according to uh, verse 11. Verse 11, the Bible says, I command thee this day, it is not... So you find that there. It's not hidden and it, it, neither is it far off. And so look at what the Bible says here. As it is not hidden. First of all, go with me to verse 12. The Bible says, uh, It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. So uh, the decisions uh, that we uh, have to make before God should not be decisions that somebody has to come and persuade you and come and convince you. Uh, that's what the Bible is teaching here uh, in verse 12. It is not in heaven that thou shalt say, the, who shall go up for us to heaven, right? So we don't have to go to, uh, we don't have to try to send somebody. You think about, uh, you remember Lazarus and uh, you remember the rich man uh, Lazarus chose the humble things of God and rich, uh, the rich man chose the things of the world and you remember when the rich man died the Bible says and he waked up in torment right and, uh, and so we, we look at that and say what does that mean well the decisions that the rich man had you remember that uh, in, in, in judgment uh, you know he was speaking to Abraham and, uh, and uh, he told Abraham uh, that uh, for Abraham to send him somebody that was raised from the dead to go and speak to his five brothers, right? So uh, it, it's not like that we have to really send somebody to be persuaded of us, amen? You're saying, preacher, what do you mean? I'm saying to you today, according to the word of God, the Bible says that our decisions are not hid from us neither are they far off. you say, what does that mean? Well, the decision that you make, you can find the good and the evil in those decisions. They will either be decisions of cursings and blessings or bitterness or sweet or whatever how you want to look at it. You can find that if you make wrong choices, well, people have to live with those choices. And so I want to say to you today, uh, that the greatest choice that we could ever make, yes, is in salvation, but the second greatest choice that we could ever make is learning to choose to walk with God. Amen? You know, it's sad that a, a, uh, a, a person who has given their heart to Jesus Christ can make poor decisions. Can I say something to you? I know what I'm talking about. I've done that. Amen? And I'm not trying to persuade you to make bad decisions so you can learn to make good decisions. 
I'm trying to persuade you that decisions can be sought out by what you are making. And you can either make the decision to live for God or not. And if you choose not to, well, there will be consequences. Why? Because God doesn't hide those decisions. When Israel chose to walk uh, after their own lust and chose to walk after their own values, they, th they chose to serve other gods, they chose to seek and allow uh, other nations to be influenced, and when they did, they suffered through it, you see? And uh, perhaps today, and say you're making some decisions, and you wonder, what, you wonder wonder why life is so hard at it. Why isn't things working out for me? Well, maybe you're not making decisions for the Lord. Because when you make decisions for the Lord, the Bible teaches that uh, he's not going to hide those decisions from you, that if you make the right decision, he's going to reward you accordingly. Amen? I believe that wholeheartedly. Amen? And uh, uh, I, I believe that in marriage. Amen? I, I married my wife, and uh, before I ever sought after my wife, I sat on the back sideline. Amen? Admiring how beautiful she was, Miss Alice. But before I ever gave my heart over to her, because I have been hurt many times, not just from uh, girls, but many people have hurt me many times. And uh, before I ever gave my heart over her, you know what I needed to find out? I needed to find out who was the head of her life. I needed to know uh, who she thought of more of because I didn't want her to, uh, to uh, just simply uh, kind of give in to her emotions and say, okay, whatever you want. I wanted somebody that would stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what, amen? And I will tell you today, living with my wife, she's a woman of God, amen? She stands and does right. And there are many times she tells me about myself, and I don't like, but you know what? It's the truth. And we don't, we, we don't like when somebody tells us uh, when we're, doing, we're not doing good. We don't like the truth. But I'm going to tell you, uh, I appreciate that. Amen. And, uh, and I think that today, today, right, it's not hidden. The choice has not been hidden in our lives. God hasn't chosen it. You can either say, well, you know what? My pastor and his wife, well, they either are blessed or they're not. See, you, you, it, one or the other, right? God doesn't hide the choices, right? And, uh, and I want to say to you today, he's not going to hide it from me and my wife, nor will he hide it from you in, in your life, amen? If you're making choices for the Lord Jesus Christ, well, he's going to put those blessings in your life. But if you're making bad choices, well, they're going to be curses. They're going to be a lot of trouble. And so today, we find that these choices uh, weren't, uh, disguise. God doesn't disguise uh, those choices. You know, I remember struggling in life, right? Uh, my, my parents split up when I was 13 years old. I began to learn and make choices. And I'm not saying everybody's life has to be better or nothing like that. I'm just saying my experiences. And, uh, and I had a, a, a poor outlook on life. I didn't know what making the choice. I didn't even know what was right for me. Amen? And, uh, and so how could I know to make right choices. I didn't even know what was right. But I remember uh, that uh, going through life uh, at the age 13, and, and I didn't get saved until I was 23, but I had a lot of hardship, and I was making uh, choices for myself, and I was making some terrible choices, bad choices, amen? Boy, thank God that I'll tell you right now that uh, some of those choices, they almost, almost landed me in prison almost laying me in prison for certain things, things that, you know what, that you can't erase, <laughs> amen? But thank God that uh, when, uh, when uh, Jesus came to me, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, I didn't understand what that meant, uh, you know, like uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I didn't understand that. But I did understand three things uh, and, uh, and, uh, and what God was telling me. And the three things that I understood, the, the three things that uh, simply got attention to my heart, that Jesus said, I am the way, and I am the truth, 
and I am the life. That's all I understood out of that verse at the age 23. But I'm going to tell you this. That is the one thing that has concreted my life to be the man that I am today. You see? And so Jesus has uh, taught me that uh, he is the way. Amen? Uh, you want to have the life of blessing? The only way is through Jesus Christ. Uh, you want to you wanna know what truth is? The only way is through is in Jesus Christ. You want to know what life means and, and, and all of that? It's all in Jesus. Amen? And so uh, guess what? That has taught me how to have my friends. That has taught me how to make decisions in my life. And you know what? It's not disguised. I made decisions that were good, and God blessed me for those decisions, and I've made decisions just like you that have been bad decisions, and the cursings have come into our life. And, uh, and so I want to say that as an adult today, uh, that for these children, we need to know that one decision, one decision has many results. Sometimes the decisions that we take, uh, that one decision in life, uh, it has many effects, amen? And, uh, and that's the one thing that I try to teach my children uh, today. Uh, you can ask my wife. I don't buttercup it for my children, amen? If I tell you don't do it, that means daddy said don't do it. I mean, you can go ahead and you can choose to do it right. If, I mean, do it your way if you want. But, uh, but uh, I treat them just like God treated me, Miss Kathy. God said don't do it. Hey, he meant it, amen? And, uh, and we have to decide accordingly. But, uh, but today, uh, I can say, uh, according to the word of God, that the Bible teaches that he doesn't disguise those decisions. It's not hidden from you. And also in verse 11, he said, neither is it far off, right? Uh, and you say, well, what do you mean far off? Do you ever think about some decisions you just don't know how to decide? You don't know what to do, but yet you know you got to make a decision? Well, it's not far off. You know where that decision is? It's right there, right? Let me show you right from the Bible uh, how, what it means. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 17 and look with me in verse 8. And let me show you, according to the Bible, uh, what it means, uh, how it's not far off, all right? And uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17 and uh, verse 8 is where we're turning to, all right? Um, and Deuteronomy 17 and verse 8, all right? Uh, all right, verse 8, the Bible says, If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, here it is, be matters of controversy within thy gates. Don't matter what decision you make, but if there's a controversy in your heart and you don't know how to make it, watch what the uh, writer says here. He says, uh, then shalt thou arise and get thee up in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. So decisions are not hard or not far from us. And, and, and today, maybe there's the decisions are of controversy in our life, and we don't know how to choose, right? We don't know how to choose which favorite candy bar, the one on the left or the one on the right, amen? We don't know. But, uh, but if you had to choose and you didn't know how to choose, the Bible's teaching here that decisions doesn't have to be far off. You can go to God, and if you can't decide in the controversy on what to decide, God will choose for you. Amen? And you know, that has helped me in my life. Amen? To know what, that the Bible teaches that God has an expected end, and he wants to choose a good life for me. All I got to do is agree with it. Amen? It's a beautiful thing. So decisions are not disguised. They're not far from us, and they're not, they are not hidden. Amen? And then second of all, look at me back in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 as we move on into our second point this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 30. 
And look with me, verse 16 and 17. I mean, through 18. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 16 through 18. The Bible says here in verse 16, um, uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 16, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them, here it is, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Here I want to uh, 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 I want to give to you according to the word of God that choices or decisions in our life have consequences. And so what does it mean uh, that uh, consequences will uh, have? Well, I want to say something to you uh, that someone has once said before that you can't buy life from Dollar Tree. Amen? You can't go in Dollar Tree and buy another life. The life that you have is a life to be lived. And uh, we have it all messed up today. We think that, well, when life isn't working well, you're going to get rid of it, and you're going to go in the dollar store, and you're going to purchase another life. They, it ain't going to happen that way, amen? It, it doesn't happen. Uh, but uh, when life is out of control, we make hard choices because sometimes we don't understand the great values in those choices. We think that they're good. We think that we may be making right choices, but we don't sometimes understand the consequences that have. I think of, uh, like I was making mention earlier, you know, uh, that uh, making, con I mean, making those choices, paying for the insurance. If I had just made those choices, I remember getting those letters. I mean, I would get them once a month, you know, a couple times a month, and I, and I made the conscious decision to not look into the, uh, the envelope, the insurance company, find out what they got to say. I made a conscious decision. I threw it in the trash, right? But if I had to stop and made a conscious decision, made a decision uh, realizing that there were consequences in what I do, then perhaps I would have never gotten the ticket, amen? And uh, that's just the way I see it. But may I say that uh, throughout my life, and I'm sure that you have seen this also, that there are certain consequences that comes with the decisions we make. Uh, we know we, we are raised up from a, from a child uh, that uh, our, our parents tell us, don't steal. Well, why not steal, right? I mean, aren't we, aren't we people that have the the choice to be able to choose? Well, yeah. But according to the word of God, God commands us not to steal. But second of all, we're not to steal because there are laws that state that if you steal, you're going to go to jail, right? And uh, that's just what we learn. And, uh, but uh, I want to ask you uh, today that uh, when life gets to where we can't make choices or when life gets to where the point that we don't know which way to go and, uh, and it feels like that we're in the den of lions, what do we do? How do we make the right choices? Well, I just tell you today, don't change. You are who you are. I mean, I mean if, you're, if you're doing what's right, then you're doing your best. You're not, you, I don't think that God wants us to change every time that we uh, come up to hardship. Amen? And, uh, but we need to make some decisions. If we're not making decisions for the Lord, then yes, it, uh, common sense would tell us we need to make change. Amen? Because of the cursings. But if we're doing our best and uh, we know that we're standing on the Word of God, then we don't need to change. See, that we live in a world that uh, the world believes that today, uh, you see it all over the Facebook, you see it all over the news, they're doing all this riot, they're doing all this protesting, and people are getting praise over it. 
Well, that's wrong. That's wicked. That's, uh, uh, that's, uh, and, and God's going to deal with them. Amen? But I'll tell you today, we aren't to be people for the Lord that accepts that kind of garbage. I was watching it, uh, a, a representative the, uh, yesterday, and man, he told it like it was. He told it like it was. And I said, you know, I, uh, I don't even know who the guy was. But I appreciate what he had to say. Amen? Because it is, it is violent. Uh, it, is, it is not designed by God. God is not an uh, author of confusion. Amen? Satan is. And he's got a lot of people mixed up. They don't know what they're doing, but I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to stand one day, and they're going to stand before God, and they're going to take care, they, he's going to take care of the consequences. And so everyone, at times, has a time of choosing what to do in life. And uh, there are times when we make these decisions, they're going to be unclear. But may I say to you, isn't it good that we can go to the Word of God and realize that God gives us commandments to keep. Amen. He gives us his commandments. He wants us to know that uh, he doesn't want us to be uh, deceived. He wants us to know you do right and I'll reward you. You do wrong and you're going to suffer the consequences. So I believe that today, you know, God has given us some things that we can understand. And, uh, and that's why we come to the Bible. Amen. Go with me to uh, Hebrews uh, in the New Testament, Hebrews uh, chapter 12. And uh, we're going to look a few, uh, as a few uh, consequences here today. All right, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. All right, and um, I'm trying to turn there. If I, if I turn to my Bible page too then uh, it helps give you time to turn your Bible page. Amen? Hebrews chapter 12. And, and uh, so I want to read you three verses. The Bible says here, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. So here, God's given you uh, an understanding that these choices uh, will, be, uh, will be shown. Amen? And uh, you don't have to wait to, uh, to uh, go into eternity to know what your choices were. God simply states, that uh, if you're his child and you do, you get out of uh, place, you, do, you get out of wrong, there will be consequences and he will deal with us according as his son. But if there is no places or chastisement or some Bible words that we use, convictions, then we need to understand, according to the word of God, we are none of his children, right? We are considered bastards. Bastards are those without a father. And uh, I want to say to you today, uh, I remember dealing with this in my life, wondering where was I at as a child of God? How do I know that I'm saved? Well, I tell you, it was a help for me that when I did something wrong, or God pulled out that, uh, that, uh, hidden, uh, that hidden rod, I mean, it wasn't hidden, uh, out of his sight, it was hidden out of my sight. I didn't know what the rod of correction was, but when I stepped out of the line, and uh, and and God said, "That's it, man." I tell you right now, He put a whooping on me, Brian, that I ain't never forgot. Amen. And I've learned since then, you don't play with God. Amen. When God tells you to do it, do it. Amen. Don't ask questions. And uh, you know what? That's how I raise my children today. If I tell them to do something, I meant it. Amen. I didn't, I didn't question around with them. And, uh, and then second of all, let's go on. Look at me in the same, same chapter, Hebrews, chapter, uh, chapter 12. Look at me in verses 9 through 11. The Bible says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, 
and we gave them reverence, shall we not much more rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. But for, for but but he for our own for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yielded the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which have done, uh, hung down and the feeble knees. So, according to the word of God, we can find uh, that God corrects the disobedience in his children. Amen? And, uh, and I appreciate that. Because uh, if God doesn't deal with me, then, man, you know, then that just simply tells me that I'm not his child. Amen? And uh, that would bother me to live a life thinking and believing that I'm God's child, but then get into eternity, die from this world, and wake up into a devil's hell. Amen? So I, uh, for me personally, I'm grateful today how God does discipline me. Amen? And uh, now let's move on. Uh, uh, verses 13 through 14. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 13 through 14. All right? Uh, as God deals with us and he shows us the, cor uh, the correctness in our life. Verses 13. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, and let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see. So we find that the commands of God is to make, uh, make straight paths and, uh, and, and don't be turned from the side to the left or to the, uh, to the right. But we are to make straight paths and we are to follow the Lord. Amen. You accept that. Amen. Today. But look at verse 14. Verse 14, the Bible says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, and uh, without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, what the Bible is describing here, that following uh, uh, verse 14, that we're following peace with all men, that's a command. Amen? God commands us. You say, well, I don't know what God wants me to do. Well, here it is. It's a command. God commands you and I to follow peace with all men. And... Holiness. You say, well, I don't know what holiness. That's why we learn the word of God, because he teaches us in his word what is holiness. But when you get down to, and, and we can understand that, but when you get down to uh, without which no man shall see the Lord, what does that mean? Well, I personally believe that today, as we understand the scriptures, I believe that when the Bible tells us that we are to follow peace with all men and holiness, and when it describes that without no man shall see the Lord, means describing this, amen? And, uh, and that is simply that we need to, uh, if we don't follow peace, and, and, uh, and I remember growing up being so rebellious with my parent, or with my mom, with my, mo my, my stepmother, right? And uh, you know that, and uh, she wasn't, my mom, per se, by blood, but she was the mom that God gave me, amen? And, uh, but when I was rebellious to her, you know what I, I, I mean, I learned later in life, and today I can describe it and tell you that, but uh, when I wasn't treating her right, I was treating the Lord Jesus Christ the same way. And the Bible teaches that whatever we do unto the least, we do unto Christ, Amen? So, so as a, uh, as a, a young 14-year-old, uh, at that day that I stood on a rooftop and I cussed at my mother and told her all these bad things that I thought about her, well, guess what? I did it unto Jesus Christ as well, you see? And you say, preacher, what does all that mean for me? Well... In my course experiences, and I'm sure some of you could agree, that in some of my course experiences, that what you reap, you sow. Amen? And uh, you want to know why I got a couple of rebellious children? 
Well, there you go. They, they come back on me, amen? And uh, I can't say, well, they act like the mom all the time, amen? Because sometimes the mom does good things, amen? More than what I would ever do. My wife, man, I, say, I appreciate her, Miss Linda. Very trustworthy people. Me, I don't trust you, amen? I don't trust you. If, I, if you don't look good, smell right, man, I ain't trusting you, amen? Now, why would I trust you, amen? I'm like this. I mean, I, I don't trust nobody. You got to prove it to me, amen? My wife ain't like that, amen? You could be the ugliest person in all the world, and she'll trust you. But may I say to you, choices have consequences. And then third of all, I want to show you, according to the Word of God, go back with me to Deuteronomy. We've seen that choices have no disguise, and we've seen that choices uh, have consequences. But according to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, look at me in verse 19. Notice what the Bible says here. Verse 19, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. The Bible says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that thou and thy seed may live. All right. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You say, preacher, what does it mean that, uh, uh, what is the scripture trying to teach me? Well, I, I want to try to teach you uh, what the Bible says. Jesus, uh, I believe that God is simply saying, he says, I call heaven and earth, here it is, to record this day. So the decisions that you're making today, perhaps right now, at this very instant, you're choosing to open up your heart to God, and guess what? It is, be re it is being recorded. <laughs> Look what the Bible says. I call heaven and earth to record this day. Today. This day. Now, this day either stands against you or for you. Amen? Simple. Amen? Simple. And uh, so you're either going to make right decisions today, and those decisions will, uh, will one day benefit you, or they won't. Right? Now, you're saying, well, I don't like the way you preach that. Well, doesn't matter how you like it. It's a matter what the Bible says. And notice what the Bible says if you would. If you're concerned about what God says, look with me in verse 17 and verse 18. The Bible says in verse 17, But if thine heart, be, uh, but it, but if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, this is what God's telling you. He says, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to possess it, uh, to go and to possess it. So here, uh, the Bible is simply telling you that your decisions are being recorded. And uh, in these decisions, you're either deciding to turn to God or to turn away. But if you're turning away from God, and you think it's all right to do that? Notice what verse 18 tells you. He says, I, I, I denounce you, right? You know what? I'm going to close my Bible, and I'm going to put up my notes, because I'm going to tell you as a pastor, as I, as I met with hardship in my life, right? Anybody can come up today and stand as a testimony, right? But the reality is this. We sometimes turn God off, and we need to understand he is our only help. He is our best help. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man of the Bible, and I say that not because I know the Bible. I say that because I understand I need the Bible. I'm not saying that to you as a, to be a Bible thumper. Oh, look at my pastor, man. He, he likes the Bible. No, I'm saying to you that more and more that I live in my life, the more I discover, not a, not a pastor in the pulpit, but as a man, I discover I need the Bible in my life. Because if I think that I can go and live a life and choose to simply deny God, I don't need God. Well, guess what? 
God says he's going to denounce me. And many people are going, to get, are going to try to step out into eternity, and they're thinking, that, hey, hey, well, I'm going to step into eternity, and I'm going to have everything that I've always dreamed for. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Today, God says if you turn away from him, he'll denounce you. But if you turn to him, he'll be closer than a friend. And he will not move. Amen? That's why I love Jesus. Amen? And that's why, I, that's why I preach so hard and I try to teach these children. One decision has many results. Today, man, it's a blessing to know we set out 600 balloons yesterday. Right? And uh, one decision. We came together. We made it happen. And God's going to show us in eternity what those decisions were made. Amen? But I want to say to you today, if you never made the decision for Jesus Christ, then you're making the terrible decision. You say, well, well, I, I, don't, I don't need to make a decision. Well, then you need to understand something. If you haven't made a decision, because, see, you don't have to teach children to do wrong. They do it automatically. Amen? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because men have loved darkness rather than light. See, if you're going to get saved, if you're going to have your life, if you're going to have a life that has blessings, you're going to have to choose God. When you're going to do it? Every day. It's not a one-time thing. It's a one-time thing to, to ask God to save your soul. But it's a continual thing, a continual commitment, making yourself to God. If you want to be blessed today, you're going to have to make those choices to God and God alone. You're going to say, you know what, God? I don't know what this day has for me, but I want to stay close to you. I don't, you know, I'm saying to you today, we're living, in a, we're living in a crazy world today. All right? A crazy world today. And the Bible says it is the fool that have said in their heart, there is no God. The fool. Right? Uh, folks, I want to encourage you that as as I read to you today on the back of that little uh, track, I want to encourage you that we work together to be a help for one another. I'm not perfect, and neither are you. But when it comes to the Word of God, there's a lot to be said about in our lives. And so understand that the, these choices that we have, they're not disguised. If you make the wrong choice today, guess what? Tomorrow you're going to reap it. Amen? You're going to reap it. And, and uh, we need to understand choices are decisions. They have consequences. Amen? And then third of all, these choices that we find uh, today, um, they are recorded. They're recorded by God. And one day, this day, these choices you're making, they're either standing for you or against you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.